At six foot eight inches, Mike Tice is the tallest coach in NFL history. And to the casual observer, this giant isn't very gentle. Get off the field! That was horse Hey, Jack, make a tackle! Or you won't see the field again! I want this block, you hear me? Good job, Freddie. You'd think the only person that can see eye to eye with Tice is the Vikings six foot five inch tight end coach, John Tice, Mike's little brother. But the secret to Mike's success is his ability to see eye to eye with everyone, including four foot three inch Billy Clinky. Best man at Tice's yeah, wedding, Clinky was born with a type of dwarfism. And though they seem like an odd couple today, their friendship goes back 40 years to central Islip, New York. At age five, height wasn't an issue. Billy lived Same across the street, so. As I said, we grew up together, but they did the growing for me. We did. <laughs> Yeah, Billy and I have been close for years. We're the same age, so we did a lot of things. We are in the same class. They used to call me and Michael in uh, elementary school, Mutt and Jeff, because we were inseparable. Billy's mother used to make us all sandwiches all the time. Cheese and mustard. One slice of cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My One slice said, of ham. The, the ham? <laughs> <laughs> it was a good childhood, if you, if you want to say, growing up. And it, we were tight, you know. We were always playing sports in the street, basketball, baseball, football, whatever the season was. Billy and I undefeated in two-on-two -two basketball. Billy would do all the shooting and I'd do all the rebound. He wouldn't let me shoot. He was a chucker. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't make it, and he tapped it in. <laughs> Anytime we played sports, football, or baseball, whatever it may be, Michael's always the captain because he's one of the best players on our block. So I was always the first one he picked. We didn't see the size. We saw the heart. And Billy's got the biggest heart of anybody I've ever met. And with a big heart, Billy Clinky had big dreams. Like the old days, huh, Willie? <laughs> I want to be a pro football player. Leroy Kelly, number 44 with the Cleveland Browns. He's like my idol. I mean, he was a great running back. Played Little League football. I played for three years. You know, being the smallest player out there, I used to get laughed and giggled at, but... He was good. He was a running back. Got in right behind them linemen, and all of a sudden, there he went. They couldn't see me. <laughs> As Mike and the other kids grew, Billy found it difficult to see even himself on the football field. Uh, I guess about 12, 13, when everybody started really shooting up, and I just stayed about the same size, and... I realized that the dream wasn't going to come true. And I was very bitter for a while and an angry young man. But I hung in there, and there's always other avenues to go down. In high school, Mike and John continued to play football, while Billy took up other sports, such as wrestling and gymnastics. By the senior prom, it was clear the Tice brothers were destined for great things on the football field. But a career in wrestling was not an option for Billy. Not ready to let go of sports, Billy found a way to keep competing. He wanted to be a professional athlete and, and uh, certainly had the talent to do it. And so he chose to be a thoroughbred jockey so he could be a professional athlete. It's a tremendous achievement. I don't think a lot of people realize how tough that is to do. Right, and not growing up around horses and all of that and just picking it up. 20 pounds lighter than the average jockey, Billy found a sport where his size or lack of it was an advantage but the dangers of the profession weighed equally on all jockeys. It was like yesterday, okay, it was a Tuesday morning up in the Finger Lakes, but anyway, they forgot to put a certain equipment on the horse, and I came off, and I, when I hit it, my legs went numb and tingly for a few seconds, and uh, I remember my whole side just blowing up, getting all swollen, and I just laid there, and I, I thought I was gonna die. I had about eight, nine fractures all on the left side, punctured lung, they had to drain my lung of blood, and I had a long time sit there and just contemplate, geez, is this, is this what I really want to be, a, a jockey? And at the time, I used to be a part-time janitor. You want to be a janitor all your life, or you want to be a, a professional jockey and hang in there? And the grace of God, I hung in there. And just as he had done in the neighborhoods of Central Islip, Mike Tice was there to help with the rebound. Well, we went to the playoffs one year in Seattle, and I took some of the extra money and bought a couple of uh, young horses, yearlings. Michael called me up when he was playing with the Seah Seahawks. He said, um, why don't you come out? I got a racehorse now, and um, I want you to ride my horse. So sure enough, I packed my tack, went out there. And we had 50, 60 people at the track, a lot of football players, and they said the room was shaking. Minnie Mavid is second. Uh, Ruthie Zone is in third. There goes Minnie Mavid flying on the outside. Minnie Mavid. Riding a horse named in his honor, Billy earned Mike Tice his first trip to the winner's circle. 
being a horse owner and winning your first race ever, that doesn't happen. And uh, we also made a commercial together too, me and Michael and Minnie Merritt. When I told my Seahawk teammates that I bought a racehorse, well, they didn't believe it. And then when my best friend Billy rode her to her first victory, well, they didn't believe that either. See you later, Minnie. See you later, fellas. I haven't even told them about that part yet. The Seahawks on King 5. Clinky won over a thousand races before retiring in 1997. He now travels the country with his partner, Chris Holyfield, teaching kids the negative effects of teasing and bullying. And whether he's there or not, Mike Tice helps with the message. I tell the kids, uh, you never know who your friend could be. Mike Tice, six foot nine, I'm four foot three. He didn't look at my size, he looked at me as a friend, and John also. JT! But John Tice is no longer just a friend. On June 21st, 1983, John married Barbara Clinky, Billy's younger sister. Friends that grew up like brothers were now officially family. I can remember the first time, you know, I was for years going on the door, knocking on the door, Billy here, Billy here, Billy here. And that one time I had to go, is Barbara here? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, my man? How you doing? The Tices aren't the only family that has accepted Clinky into their lives. The Minnesota players have also claimed him as their own. These are my two nine-year-olds. That's the two nine-year-olds, right? Yeah, y'all my two nine-year-olds. I don't know how he, did, how he didn't turn out black, but these are my two sons right there. What up, boys? What's happening? Sometimes I got to pinch myself, you know, going on to the field, and Michael as a head coach, and my brother-in-law John as a tight end coach and assistant line coach. It's like dreams come true. Billy's never said, no, I can't. Well, maybe reaching the pedals in the car. Yeah. You had to get the blocks. <laughs> had to get the blocks. The but blocks. he's never said, no, I can't. And uh, that's something that a lesson I learned from him growing up, you know, across the street and not waste something that, you know, John and I were blessed with, which was, was size. It wasn't easy growing up to be Bill Clinky, but look what, look what he's done. I mean, God, you know, that's, it's wonderful. I'm very blessed, very blessed what I've accomplished in my life with the help of Michael and John with sports, with life itself. And no pun intended, I look up to them. <laughs>